If you're a parent, teacher, or school leader, and you're sick and tired of the frustration, anger, and unfair treatment of children at high risk in our public schools, then perhaps it's time for all of us to do something about it. In this podcast, Dr. Amitra Berry brings you tips, tools, strategies, and tactics to build successful solutions while touching, moving, and inspiring all of us to transform our schools so that every child thrives. Here's your host, Dr. Berry. Having a hangover is so awful, according to British actor and comedian Stephen Fry. It's like being in prison for a crime you didn't commit. Welcome back, Equity Warriors. Thanks for tuning in to another episode focused on the intersection of education and politics here on the 3E Podcast. Last week, I told you I have an announcement coming. So again, heads up, there is something big coming, and I'll be dropping that announcement mm, probably in another three or four episodes. So do stay tuned. Make sure you subscribe to the show. Connect to me on social media so you don't miss the big news. Hangovers. If you've ever had one, you know. And I'll say that America has a hangover. We have a DEI hangover. Living and working in this space, as Stephen Fry said, is like being in prison for a crime you didn't commit. I've been in this space for more than 20 now, 20 years now, more than longer than the the term DEI has has been in use, longer than the word equity was used to define or ascribe what it was we were trying to do to elevate the outcomes of marginalized learners in schools. I've been supporting educational equity. I've been working in systems challenged by low literacy, by low numeracy skills, failing schools and failing school systems, places with high teacher turnover and disproportionality in terms of who is suspended and expelled or who is assigned or relegated to special education. I've been doing a lot of reflecting lately. And I think back to or think about the backlash that we've had in the last two, three, four years And even before then, every time there is a major moment of clear accountability, a moment of 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 bringing to light justified patterns of misconduct when there's been a national crisis, unavoidable circumstances, I think across my lifetime, I have seen Vietnam, Rodney King's beating, Hurricane Katrina, 9-11, the election and administration of Barack Obama, all that went with COVID, including the public lynching of George Floyd, the Confederate flag and statues that we have worked hard to bring down, the names of schools or schools named after Confederates that we have worked to change. And every single time, it seems we take two steps forward, we are pushed back three While we march, they pivot. They figure another way to legally impose their racist will. They invade local, state, and federal politics, our school boards, places where marginalized children are becoming even more marginalized, where truth in terms of what is taught the history that's taught is no longer truth, but demonized as as woke politics or DEI. But those of us, those who truly believe in equity, those who are affected by what's happening, and those who call themselves allies, as well as those of us who are true warriors, it is like we have a hangover. We are imprisoned for a crime we didn't commit. You see, if you are black, brown, indigenous, Asian, no matter what people tell you about whether or not they see color, if you present as a person of color, it is the first thing that they see. 
And if they are to any degree racist, we are judged on that perception of how we present. Folks, you've got to understand that we're fighting an enemy who plays dirty. We're fighting an enemy that is focused on killing the plant of equity by destroying the roots. See, they're not after us old folks. They will say things. They will post things. They might come at us. They come at me. But what they really want to do is get at our kids. They're after our children. Because whether we want to admit it or not, whether or not we want to believe it, you see, Adolf Hitler had a plan. And they use that plan. And that plan is about changing the youth. So they ban books. They pass laws that restrict the free speech of those of us who fight for equity. And they do it saying that it's about First Amendment protections. They arrest and beat and suspend our college students who are protesting right now. Our college students protesting against the atrocities in Gaza. I don't want to go down that rabbit hole. I'll talk about that next week. So stay tuned for the next episode, 98. What we have, what we are faced with is a type of racism that runs so deep that we think we have a victory. And it's like we, we drink this, this liquor of a minor victory to, to fill this void, this, this pain that we feel being subjected to racism and inequity, the trauma that comes with that. But as we drink up that minor victory, we do so only to empty ourselves further and drain our spirits even more. That's our hangover. So what should we do? What is the cure for this hangover now? Frankly, if I drink a little too much tequila, yeah, my cure is a bowl of menudo the next day. This doesn't get cured that easily. We need to learn. We need to learn how to strategize. We need to learn how to act from behind a curtain. We need to be able to expose the ugliness without telegraphing our plans. We can't tell them what we're going to do. You can't tell the enemy how you're going to defeat them. And we can forget about tools and resources that we think we can get that are under government control. We have to go back to the old ways. We have to go directly to our community, to our roots, to people who are impacted by anti-DEI mega zealots and we have to remember as black folks say not all skin folk are kin folk you keep your friends close and your enemies closer you learn their playbook and develop a proactive defense to defeat them and you join me again next week Remember, big news coming shortly. Connect with me on social. Use those links down in the notes. And as always, don't worry about the things you cannot change. Change the things you can no longer accept. I'll see you next time. That's it for today's episode of the 3E Podcast. Head over to iTunes and subscribe to the show. One lucky listener every single week that posts a review on iTunes will win a chance in a grand prize drawing to win a $25,000 value private VIP day with Dr. Barry herself. Be sure to head over to 3epodcast.com and pick up a free copy of Dr. Barry's gift. Then join us on the next episode.